So we will move to, to our next uh, speaker. Mm. Wait. Yes, so uh, our next speaker is uh, Shiva. So uh, Shiva uh, is uh, an experienced uh, UX uh, designer with a demonstrated history of uh, working in the information technology. Uh, she is also very skilled in uh, voice user interface, uh, design, uh, technical English, Adobe Creative Cloud, special user inter experience design, uh, and a strong product management uh, professional with a master degree uh, of science focused in digital media from University of Bremen. So hello, Shiva. Hi, Kautar. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm super excited to be in this event today. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, of course. So, um, you will have it uh, at the bottom. So uh, Shiva will, uh, will uh, talk about uh, her, uh, her uh, design uh, stories in XR uh, and uh, some uh, in this industrial use cases uh, of XR and uh, her missions uh, on uh, T-Systems Multimedia Solution, which is uh, a company in uh, Germany. So uh, I think we lost the connection with Shiva. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, do you hear us, Shiva? Yes, I hear you. Um, I think I had some, uh, uh, yeah, some issue with uh, sharing my screen. Uh, so you will find it in the the bottom, uh, beside the mute and stop camera. Yeah, well, I can see that, but unfortunately. I think it's some security that doesn't allow me to um, share my screen. Uh, I'm just going to check it on security and privacy to just activate Chrome. I think that that is why I was kicked out from from Chrome. But um, okay. So uh, I'm repeating if I <laughs> uh, you will find the, the screen that you want to share uh, at the top. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't allow me to share. That's the problem. So, so um, what could be the alternative? I just go without or I send you my, uh, my slides. Yes, send it me on email so I could share it. Okay. Uh, would that be okay if I just um, add you to Sometimes I hate Mac, but it's fine. Um, <clears throat> if I just add you to my slides, so maybe you can somehow like get it immediately. Okay, I just shared my slide with you. Um, yeah, no matter how cool it sounds, AR, VR, and technology, sometimes VR stuck with very basic stuff so that's how technology is acting um but nevertheless i will start um and um hopefully i can show my slides other than that i will just uh, talk through them um just let me know if you got my slides because i added you for collaboration um so today i will talk about um Ex um, extended reality UX design or user experience design for extended reality. Um, so a little bit uh, about me. Just let me know when, when you go uh, to my slides. Excuse me. Uh, I write in the private chat uh, my my email. So did you add uh, this email to the? Um, I think I added this one, but I'm going to try again. Yeah, I added that one. So I will give you my second email. I mean, simply the share button is disabled for me. 
Um, okay. Let's try with the, the second email because I haven't received the, on the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so I will just continue and let me know when you when you got it. Hopefully it works. Um, so my educational background is in technology and uh, languages, linguistics, um, and um, as well as digital media. And my thesis was about uh, designing cognitive and metaphoric interfaces for virtual indoor spaces to test uh, visual spatial intelligence. So. It sounded so nerdy, but I wanted to um, maybe like uh, elaborate on that a little. So um, some people have trouble um, reading maps or when, you know, like you're in a store, you go uh, into a shop and then when you get back, you don't know from which direction you enter the shop. Or for example, when you want to park your car, you don't really have a precise understanding of the size of your car, especially when you want to park it. And um, so, Basically, what I did was um, actually using a web VR technology, designing some um, serious game in order to uh, train um, the visual spatial intelligence for people uh, with some issues, um, as I mentioned, reading maps or finding direction. Um, so from there, I slowly started my transition from a classic UX designer into um, someone who was uh, mostly working with let's say, facial computing. Um, currently, I am um, an XR and screen UX designer um, at T-System Multimedia Solutions, uh, which is um, actually part of the telecom, Doja Telecom family. And I also uh, am part-time involved with XR Bootcamp, which are throwing, uh, you know, like master classes for XR. And I'm, the, I'm a mentor there as well. So the topics that I really care is um, natural design in extended reality, uh, as well as accessibility, um, the topic that Alina also mentioned um, previously. And um, the other thing that as a designer matters um, to me a lot is humane design. I think some of you perhaps uh, watch Social D and Dilemma on Netflix. So uh, if you watch that, you know what I'm talking about. Um, any success with the slide? No. Okay. I haven't that's, seen it. That, that, that's, a, that's a pity, but... Um, so, we, uh, in which platform you, you've, you've made the slides? Is it on Google Slides or...? Uh, no, actually it's Keynote. Oh. Uh, it's, uh, is it an Apple product? Yes. Maybe that's why I haven't received it. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try share again, but uh, at the same time, I don't wanna lose my time. Um, so maybe later on, um, I will just share it as a PDF so everybody can, can have access to it, but I don't wanna kill more time or lose it anymore. So I will just go, um, you will only see me, but yeah. <clears throat> so, um, a little bit of my enterprise portfolio. Um, currently with um, T-System and Deutsche Telekom, what I worked on were, uh, were, are actually two products. Uh, one is called AR Field Advisor. So um, if you even Google it, you can have access to it. It's a remote maintenance, uh, mobile augmented reality uh, application. And my role was a UX designer um, in that project, uh, which is uh, recumbent in collaboration with uh, Deutsche Telekom. And the other uh, product which uh, was designed uh, for the first version of HoloLens, uh, Microsoft HoloLens is called Schwann Remote Support. It's um, um, collaboration with Schwann Cosmetics. And again, um, it's a remote as a maintenance or assisted reality solution for, uh, for factories. And um, my role was uh, spatial UX um, testing and app ident identity design. Um, so the use cases that I mostly work on in, in, um, in my, um, let's say, career is uh, 
basically B2B solutions for AR and um, VR, but mostly AR, um, such as this remote maintenance. And one example is, uh, you know, you basically create a connection channel between a field engineer that is in a factory, let's say somewhere in Germany, and there is a problem with the machine in that factory. And um, the producer of that uh, machine um, is the, you know, like um, having the expert to actually support you when there is a malfunction. So what this application does is like you create a channel of communication, which is basically a, um, a video call, and then you you get the holographic annotation from the expert um, sitting in Japan, as an example. So why um, remote maintenance is hugely famous and is actually becoming um, very mainstream in, in industry is because it saves um, a lot of cost and time, both for field engineers and experts. And um, so that's something that is uh, um, still currently a, a a project going on telecom and um, Sean Cosmetic was the same, but uh, the difference is like Sean Cosmetic is for standalone um, devices. Um, other enterprise portfolio um, that I uh, worked on uh, was previously with um, Dassault System 3DX site. Um, so if you know um, some of their, for example, SolidWorks, if you heard of them. Um, so I was a usability engineer and UX designer and um, the connection to VR was just um, when I was designing or, you know, like uh, working on the UX architect of some of their um, VR related features. And so <laughs> that was a time that I really got into um, more or less say spatial computing and spatial design. And then previously before that, I was working for um, a startup called Navis and um, they are creating uh, digital twins. Um, I was again a usability engineer and a UX designer. And um, uh, what we did uh, in that, um, we did a lot of uh, digital twins of uh, so many places, but the famous ones, for example, like um, Flughaf and München, which is uh, basically the airport in Munich and World Economic Forum, as well as uh, Deutsches Museum. So, um, you could actually search and you can see the it was really similar to for example google street um, map or street view but for indoor systems so that was um uh, my journey from you know like um, maybe a classic ux designer to someone who is um working with uh, different platform and different tools talking about tools um i categorize the the gadgets that or the apis that i work with um which is basically mobile, tethered, and standalone. So uh, for mobile, probably you heard about AR Core and AR Kit uh, from Google and um, uh, Apple. So these two are the, you know, like the application programming interfaces for augmented reality, which is helping uh, the domination of uh, mobile AR um, among so many people. And I still believe that mobile AR is the strongest and dominating um, um, AR, let's say medium among all people, because literally everybody nowadays has a smartphone and um, the one that can actually support these two APIs. Um, the other gadget that I work with, uh, is a tethered one, which is basically something between, you know, mobile AR, but the transition of, uh, you know, from mobile screen to, um, to the spatial screen, which is basically this, um, it's a Chinese startup, they're called Enreal. So you basically connect your um, um, glasses, Enreal glasses to your phone and your phone is your operating system. And then you can actually uh, project everything that was um, on your mobile screen or basically you could see them, see them through your mobile screen, but then you can see, see this uh, through the glasses. And very good news that these um, cheap tethered AR glasses will be released um, for um, consumer market next year. And um, then again, you can um, you know see how you can see how this um, AR is becoming more mainstream into into consumer market. And the other tools that I worked uh, with uh, Holland's one and two, and as well as uh, Magic Leap, which are they are the expensive ones and. Uh, Normally, um, companies are using them, so it's like um, 
a designer would not really go and buy uh, by themselves to to design for HoloLens unless um, they have a lot of money and they want to to experiment a little. But uh, these are the categories of tools um, that I use. And um, basically, I wanted to um, let's say narrow down a little what is an um, extended reality UX designer. What do they do? Um, so if you're coming from a background of classic UX design, you do the, the concept, you, you do the wireframes and you do the prototypes, you do the testing, then you go to um, high fidelity design, which is more color and um, all the elements have more uh, visual characteristic to themselves. And as well as um, if you're an interaction designer, you also create interaction metaphors. But all these things um, for a uh, you know, classic UX designer is designer is um, is very um, um, smooth because there are so many tools um, for them. But unfortunately, uh, for extended reality design, if you want to make a concept, you have to either do uh, do it on a paper and pen. And um, some designers agree that it's 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 very good approach for ideation. Some say that okay, it doesn't really represent and show and transfer all the dimensions that you are going to experience in uh, extended reality because you are you are drawing on a two D uh, paper, but you want to experience in a you know like um, a three D dimension, so it doesn't really transfer everything to you. So I personally feel like. And even the concept and ideation phase should be in a way that we could um, we should we could tackle the issues of uh, all the uh, dimensions that are evolving involving in spatial experience. Like um, when you are scrolling on a website, you just scroll up and down on a two D screen. But if you want to scroll on, for example, Magic Leap, or let's say you want to um, uh, Hololens as an example, you know, like you want to scroll if you want to. Um, you know, do either this or you do it with your head or with your gaze. So it's totally different because not only you have to move up and down, then you also have the field of view, which adds more dimension to, to your experience. So um, you might think that the transition from classic UX design is easy to spatial UX design, but it's actually not because there is no um, pattern or a UX, um, let's say, design library for um, spatial design, but you have to, it's, it's super experimental. You really have to find a way to do it. But in general, what uh, UX designers in excellent reality, they do the concept, but they may repurpose some of the uh, other tools that are there. For example, for conceptual phases, uh, I'm using um, some of the tools um, that are used in cinematography, for example, for creating the plots um, and storyboards for um, different scenes because uh, it has the, let's say the sketch of a 3D dimension of the scene. So I use that. Or for prototyping, there are some tools um, that you can start doing prototyping or in VR and also simulate the AR in VR prototypers called, uh, for example, Tivori, you can use that. But it's a little bit expensive. For example, it's like 150 um, per month, um, dollars per month um, for, in, for an individual designer who wants to just experiment, it's just too much. So, um, and also the setup requires a very um, good system. So, so the prototyping phase is a little bit tricky. You don't know how to prototype. And uh, also the usability testing, if you don't have a prototypical tool, like let's say Adobe XD that you have uh, in classic design, um, mm -hmm. that you can actually also test um, your prototype with the same Adobe XD tool. There is no such a thing um, for um, XR. I mean, you have Unity, but Unity is not really a design tool. I mean, it's not for designers. It's uh, for um, people who make games and developers and, you know, like it's a game engine. So um, you need to, you know, you know, you need to put a lot of time in order to, to learn and it's... Um, Meanwhile, you you know lose a lot of time, especially if you're working in enterprise context. You don't have the luxury of having I don't know two months to learn this and then try it and see how it works. And uh, as well as creation of interaction metaphors, um, I think um, unfortunately I could not be in the speaker of uh, Zach, but I'm sure that he knows uh, 
for each interaction, the tailor-made interaction for, let's say, um, HoloLens or for, um, yeah, Magically, for example, um, it requires a big team of developers to, you know, uh, create those interactions. So that doesn't make it easy for a UX designer to, to say, okay, sky is my limit and I'm going to go with any interaction metaphor that I want. Like if I want to scroll down, if I want to make some animations, like um, it costs a lot. So those challenges that the UX designers are facing is um, actually like pain in the neck for, for designers in XR industry. Uh, but it's going better because there are um, tools that are coming out and you can, as I mentioned, repurpose some of the, the other tools to use these things. This slide that unfortunately you guys cannot see, uh, I'm talking about a different way of storytelling in extended reality. Um, I will just try to depict it as, as uh, best as I can. Um, so in order to, storytelling is a most important part of extended reality because um, you know, you're changing, you're shifting the medium from something that is um, super familiar, uh, like mobile phone or web websites to something that people, I mean, it might come natural, but people don't really act na natural while using standalone devices. Like you really tell them to do this um, air tap and they have a hard time doing it, you know, like uh, also the ergonomy of it is not so comfortable because they, after a lot of time, they're focusing to, you know, like grab something with air tap with HoloLens. Uh, one, for example, that had air tap, um, they get, you know, like their arms start hurting. So um, it's very important where, where to put your um, UI elements and how, how to design them. So um, it's always good to design them as something called diegetic interfaces, um, which is basically um, diegetic inf interfaces coming from the game uh, industry. So if there are gamers out there watching this, they know what I'm talking about. But to be more precise about diegetic interface is that the, the element of your UI is within the plot of your story. So in this slide that unfortunately I'm the only one seeing it, um, there is a toolbox, literally a toolbox with wrench and other tools um, that is on the, you know, on the space that um, it's instead of the hamburger menu or the, and the setting menu. So try to, uh, when designing and see, um, see when it's possible, change the boring, or not the boring, like do not put a hamburger menu when you are working with HoloLens 2 or Magic Leap, when you're working in space, because you are in space and those three line hamburger menu doesn't make sense. Or, you know, the setting menu, uh, which is the, the gear, it doesn't make sense. So. If that represents, so we are talking about semiotics and signs. So when you're when you're changing semiotics in a website, which is something more digital and maybe unnatural, when you're coming to more natural approach, which is the spatial design and you know the the space, your room, your um, where you live is actually, for example, your your medium, then try to design the elements as natural as possible. Then make them three D, make them. Uh, don't make them metaphoric. You know, if you want to create a toolbox, then literally create a toolbox and put it there. And then if there are some tools, then user can literally grab those holographic tools from the toolbox. And the other thing that I mentioned here is a little bit of, um, you know, cinematic effect. Um, because I had a project with Unreal and we were supposed to, you know, um, make a transition of whole uh, uh, telecom entertainment into, um, um, AR and one of those was um, actually watching movies with um, AR glasses. So the easy approach is to just show the screen and as it is, and um, you know, like the people can actually watch movie via uh, their um, AR glasses. In this case, for example, Unreal. But then what? What else you could do is like um, in some part. I mean, it requires a lot of effort, but in some parts, when possible, you could add some cinematic effect. If there is a, the battle, um, some part of the movie, or um, if there is some action going on, you can actually um, create some elements of that screen coming out of the screen towards a person. Of course, that's not the role of a UX designer, but that's the role of a content designer for AR. So what I'm saying, all this approach is 
also including designers that are creating content, movie content or games for, for XR. So use the potential of this medium, which is um, actually this um, the sound or the visual effects. Um, oftentimes designers try to really completely close their eyes to voice user interface, which is actually leading us to, uh, to the accessibility um, issue that I um, mentioned earlier. Um, for example, if somebody is visually impaired um, or they are, for example, like blind, it's really impossible to use something like Oculus, uh, Oculus Quest because um, there's not that much voice user interface in that. And um, so these, you know, small things um, are very important, but designers tend to forget because, you know, the technology is sometimes it's, it's, it's a big of a gimmick that we really tend to um, forget about the details. And the other thing is like, you can also create some immersiveness within AR as an example, um, because, you know, we have three different uh, type of, uh, let's say scale for AR. Um, one is the tabletop, which is mostly for mobile um, AR applications that you have, you know, a surface and you know how, how much, how big is your um, elements because that's called tabletop. And then you have another one, which is called room scale. And um, usually standalone um, AR devices or as well as mobile phones, um, you can experience the room scale with those mediums. And um, the other one is the world scale, which you have literally something um, augmented as big as a building, as an example. So these scales are really important to define the immersiveness of um, our story in, in extended reality. Uh, so, thank you, uh, Shiva, for this uh, interesting talk and speech. Uh, I have a uh, little experiences uh, with the UI and UX design, so uh, I can uh, I can see how much uh, it's difficult to to design a UX a UX inter, a UX and UI interface interfaces uh, for the extended reality. Uh, so we can now go to the Q and A. So we have. Uh, here, which, the, which tool do you advise students and beginner to use in order to start designing XR solutions UX? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect question because it was uh, actually the ending slide. Uh, um, so I categorize them for 2D assets creation, just if you have a 2D um, asset that um, you want to augment, for example, just go ahead and use Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. If you have 3D assets, um, in your application and you are obviously not a 3D designer but you're just a UX designer and you want to you know use some of those uh, rudimentary um, elements that are 3D you can simply use paint 3D there were so many times that I use paint 3D because yeah. they have this good library Adobe Dimension is also a good one um, that yeah. you don't necessarily need to know Blender or need to be a 3D designer to actually use Adobe Dimension. The other one, which is a cloud-based, is Vectory 3D. Uh, I'm going to send all these uh, slides uh, to Kautar yeah. so she, she can share it with you because I'm just reading and I can imagine it's annoying. The well, other thing is... Well, I want to share all the, the slides of the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Speakers. yeah. And, and you know, if, if you're familiar with Ketchup, Ketchup is also an amazing tool. Another one is Mixama, which is more for yeah. animation. It depends on the purpose. And at the end, also Blender. Uh, but then again, I have category of all those tools that I will share with you and it's actually helping for, for uh, beginners um, in XR. Yeah, so uh, uh, as you said, the, uh, Adobe XD doesn't have these features of uh, XR developments because I've been using it uh, and I just can design uh, interfaces and uh, see the UX design of uh, an application or a website. And uh, Unity is uh, a game engine. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, we, we will uh, share the, the solutions you've, uh, you've listed. Yeah. Uh, 
on our Facebook page. Uh, we have another question here is, uh, how do you think uh, the pandemic has affected the AR and VR industry and uh, its evolution? Uh, and uh, did the dem demand increase during this quarantine? Uh, definitely. I mean, um, talking from hands-on experience, um, it's a sad thing why I was seeing some of my friends in other industry, not technology or uh, not to be specific, XR technology, really lo lost their job because of uh, COVID-19. I had five projects at the same time um, because, you know, the, the demand really increased um due to um this pandemic you know and um obviously it, it was a revolution i mean it's it's embarrassing that this industry had to wait for a pandemic to to really be more bold and show the potential it's really embarrassing that you had to wait a pandemic should happen so people realize that okay you can do more in ar and vr but um to to answer you quickly definitely it was um it was a breakthrough <laughs> into the market yeah uh, another question for me uh, is uh, uh, these softwares like blender or the other ones so what is the specs of the laptop or the computer that mm -hmm. can support this uh, these uh, softwares uh, actually for blender um the spec i mean i cannot really give you the detail but yeah. i even use blender on um on a laptop that didn't have i mean <laughs> i'm using on my enterprise that doesn't have a dedicated graphic card and i'm using blender on it so you can imagine it's like blender is amazing especially the uh, I think 2.8 uh, is the latest one. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, if you are interested and you don't find the learning curve frustrating, go with Blender because they also improve their user interface and it's free. And um, cool. yeah, you, you can, can benefit even from like, you know, I know some uh, VR um, people that are even telling their story via Blender. So, you know, the first phase that I already mentioned, which is actually the concept and storytelling, that um, I personally use other tools that I will I will share with all of you, <laughs> um, but you know you can use it directly in Blender to you know there there's this node network that you can actually connect your um, different chunk of story together and then it's only one package for you. So um, I think Blender is a very good very good tool. Use it. <laughs> I've seen some videos on YouTube and tutorials about people creating sculpting and creating 3d models on blender so it's a very powerful software yeah it is it is it has very good renders i think two three renders that are very powerful but i mean you don't really need that because the render part is um the part that um your uh, xr device will take care of but i love blender i I'm, I'm learning but then again you have to really you have to see what you want to be if you want to be an xr designer then you have to define uh, okay these two and this one and this so i will i will learn but for people who are um coming from classic ux background is much more difficult you know to to change from um those tools to new tools but it's possible yeah. Uh, the last question here is, uh, what are the current challenges that stops uh, the people from using XR? Mm -hmm. um, I'm just answering this from my own perspective. Um, I think maybe one of it is because most people, and I'm talking globally, I'm not just talking in Germany, because in Germany is a buzzword. Oh, I'm, I'm using XR. I, I have Oculus 2, for example, yeah. these kind of things. So you're talking about the, um, um, the pragmatic part of this uh, application, you know. I personally believe that when a technology is just a gimmick, uh, people say, yeah, uh, what solution it brings me? And I'm talking about the mainstream. I'm not talking about the industry. And um, but, uh, for example, games, AR games like um, that Pocket Monsters, Pokemon, for example, Pokemon Go, it was actually super successful, you know? So when you think yeah. about it, it depends what XR you're talking about. Because XR in entertainment is actually not bad. Or also other consumer product that is called IKEA, I think, Space? 
or it's, it's from Ikea. So if you want to buy something, you simply put the furniture inside yes. your room. That is super yes, practical, yes. you know, but there are other yes. tools that are just like, you know, so what you really, <laughs> you have to see that. I mean, people, I think ask themselves, is this technology really solving a solution for humanity? Then if it's that, if that's a yes, then we are good. But if that's a no, then people don't want to use it. And the other thing is for high-end XR device is the price. For example, a HoloLens 2, I think it's like $3,000 or something. But wait for mobile AR because it's continuing to be demanding. Also web VR. Um, and I think like people will hear about it more often, I'm sure. Yeah. So thank you, Shiva, for uh, your presentation and your- Sorry, I didn't have anything speech. to present. I just talked. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was interesting. So yeah, I will send everything um, so you can share on Facebook um, and see what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for your uh, for accepting our invitation and uh, for celebrating the Archipel E Day with us. Uh, now, yeah, you're welcome. 